Uh, my name is Zach Daniel. I work at Dockyard. Uh, I've never given a talk before, so I decided to start with a five-minute talk. Um, and I'm mostly up here because I couldn't deal with being the only Dockyarder that didn't talk today. Uh, <laughs> so one thing I see often uh, whenever I get to work with a new client or work at a new job uh, is there's a lot of little things that you can do to uh, help yourself with your Postgres database. Uh, just super actionable, quick, easy tips uh, that you could take back and just you know, improve your effectiveness. So uh, let's just uh, roll into them. So for deployment, uh, some of these are obvious. Deploy in the same network. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna incur like, a significant amount of latency if you're de deploying your Postgres database to a different network. Um, use the latest stable version. A lot of times I hear, you know, I, we'll, we'll see somebody on Postgres 9 or Postgres 8, uh, it's relatively painless to upgrade, and uh, they're mostly stable. There was actually a bug in like the most recent stable version, so maybe I shouldn't give you that advice, I don't know. Uh, but tune your database. Uh, very often, uh, people will just be running with the vanilla Postgres database that they got by a you know, yum install or whatever, uh, and they don't realize that there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of tuning variables that you can set that are going to make your database perform better with your hardware um, especially if you're on SSDs, uh, Postgres doesn't come tuned for SSDs by default. So, you know, you're going to see a lot of gains if you just go to pgtune.leopard, and it's going to give you, like, some really basic, uh, useful defaults to use for tuning your database. Uh, these aren't all of them, and I don't have time to explain all of them, uh, but uh, Postgres also has a guide on it, all its uh, tuning variables. So for migrations, uh, avoid using application code. Uh, that, that, that's predominantly because you're not going to notice when you delete application code that breaks a migration because you've probably already run that migration locally. Um, Two-phase migrations, that's probably one of the bigger tips uh, that a lot of people, I, I noticed, they don't follow um, and is extremely useful, um, which I'll illustrate here in a second. Uh, and also know what operations are locking or expensive. Um, this one's pretty obvious. Don't use application code in your migrations, at least as best as you can, because somebody's going to delete that, right? I've seen that all the time. Uh, and it just kind of wastes time, and sometimes you don't notice until you've either shipped it to, until you've shipped it and somebody's downloaded your library or whatever uh, and can't use it anymore. Um, Two-phase migrations. Don't do this, right? Especially if you're running an important production application. Don't remove a field, don't add a field to your schema and create the field in the database in the same deployment. Um, this is... Uh, predominantly to avoid having that little blip in between when you run your migrations and when your application is actually successfully deployed, um, where your application is using a field that doesn't exist, right? Ecto schemas, all queries against them will fail uh, if they are referencing a field that doesn't exist in the database. Uh, it's very inconvenient. Um, and it also doesn't let you roll back. If you write your code like this, you actually can't roll back. Everybody thinks they're secure, like, oh, I can just roll back. But then you realize you have to roll everything back um, and you can't do them at exactly the same time. So you're always going to have these little blips of downtime. So instead, first, remove the field from your schema and add this new field that you're adding. This is an example of, you know, replacing some field with a new field. Um, and uh, then it, ship that. Ship it to production. And then the next time you ship to production, you can do the rest. And this means that any two versions of your application are compatible with the migrations from the last one, right? So you can always freely go back and forth, you can do your migrations whenever you want, you could do it after you deploy, right? Uh, there's a lot of benefits to doing things like that. Um, locking and expensive operations, um, I see this all the time. Uh, people will just, you know, add a default value to a column that you're adding to a table and not realize that's gonna A, take forever, and B, lock the table, right? So, don't do it. Uh, creating indexes, indices, indexes. I'm not sure which one that is supposed to be, but uh, again, that's gonna lock the table for updates, 
right? So if you're if you create an index on a large users table, all of a sudden you know people can't sign up or alter their account. So look out for stuff like that. Uh, for querying, uh, explain and analyze are your friends. Um, it's not really a mystery why your query isn't doing well. Uh, there are tools to help you with that. Uh, denormalize your data. It's very important. Uh, it's really easy. And so sometimes it feels dirty, but it's a very useful thing. Uh, and there's a lot of SQL out there, a lot of little useful tricks that aren't in your sort of standard repertoire. Um, this is a Postgres explain visualizer. Uh, it's very easy to use. Just put in your explain results, and it's going to tell you exactly what about your query was difficult. And if you don't know what a seek scan is, you can Google it. It'll be all right. Um, denormalization. Yeah, it's weird to have like a count of posts on your user, but you use that kind of stuff all the time, and it's going to make your interactions with your database a lot more performant than grouping up your posts table and getting a count every time you need it. Um, yeah. Oh, the SQL you'll find if you just look through stuffy documentation for hours. Um, it's really not that bad, but uh, there's tricks like grouping sets that also can be phrased as a roll-up um, that's going to get you a lot of information that you might have made uh, a lot of queries for. Uh, it's going to get you that in one query. Um, or, for instance, the filter statement, which is relatively new, uh, but lets you get a lot of count results in one go. And monitoring, use PG Hero. It's very easy to use. It's very fun. And I had to skip that part, but thank you. That was my talk.